What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook, Tuesday afternoon, late in the day. Uh, We didn't get Mike McCarthy until 5.30 Central, so uh, after attending to my duties here at PackersNews.com, I thought I'd jump on Facebook and talk to you fine folks. See how you're doing a little bit under 24 hours later, uh, watching your team get embarrassed on national television. Thought I'd take the temperature. Hello, Edwin. How are you? Lyle, thanks for joining us. Lloyd, hello. Always nice to see so many people say hello right away. Dan, it's going all right. Thanks for asking. Michael, yo. Tommy, with the first question out of the gate, when are we going to see Callahan? Um, I would venture not anytime soon, but this thing can probably turn on a dime if I'm being honest. I'm, you know, Hunley, Brett Hunley, McCarthy has um, put, you know, All his eggs in this basket, it's very clear. He, he again, gave him a full-throated kind of, you know, uh, endorsement yesterday after the game. He seems to be tied to this idea, and I think it would take uh, multiple turnovers and multiple games uh, for, you know, Hunley to to get the hook, so to speak. Uh, We saw last night the game plan was very much uh, safe throws at or behind the line of scrimmage, and very rarely was he asked to throw downfield. Now, when he was asked to throw downfield, he, uh, you know, sometimes missed, uh, missed throws, missed reads. Uh, he looked at the rush quite often, escaped pockets he had no business uh, running out of. Uh, he's a young quarterback, and he's got to play live snaps. It's one thing to prepare him for weeks on end and uh, to say, you know, you've got three years invested in him, but nothing duplicates live reps, and he missed a whole summer of preseason, obviously, with a, the ankle injury a couple years ago, and uh, that's showing up now, you know, the lack of actual playing time. He's learning on the job, and that's why McCarthy has been so buttoned up with his offensive game plan. He knows if he opens it up, he's opening it up to a, a whole host of problems, uh, the biggest of which would be potential turnovers with his young quarterback. Uh, we need to open up the playbook for Hunley if we want to win. I mean, that's a double-edged sword, as I was just saying. You can open up the playbook, but then you better be ready for a slew, especially against the better defenses, a slew of turnovers. Uh, let him loose and see what he can do. What's the worst that can happen? We lose. Oh, uh, well, that's one way to look at it. Um, I would think you would want to give yourself a better chance to win a game. I'd trade Hundley. Well, Sean, I think uh, at this point it'd be really hard to. Um... Obviously, this year they can't because we're past the trade deadline, but even going into next offseason, unless Hunley seriously ramps it up here in the second half of the season, it's going to be hard to think they can get much more than what they put into him, which was a fifth-round pick. Uh, I can't see them getting that for him at this point. Capers should be done along with McCarthy. Well, Richard, I don't think McCarthy's going anywhere, but I do think there's a very good chance Dom Capers uh, could swing at the end of the season if he doesn't turn it around on his end of the deal. Uh, The defense... Uh, looking lost for the second game in a row. Um, the Lions not having to punt a single time uh, is just about all the indictment you need. Um, they looked a step ahead at every turn. Uh, they knew everything that Dom wanted to do, and they knew how to counter it. Um, and this has been an ongoing thing with uh, Dom Capers against the better quarterbacks in the game, of which Matthew Stafford clearly has won. Um, his ability at the line of scrimmage to get them into favorable matchups and favorable and advantageous kind of looks it happened throughout the game. Uh, between him and Jim Bob Cooter, they had they ate Dom Caper's lunch all night. <laughs> Zook was our most impressive coach on Monday. Zook. Yeah, Jack, I would, I would kind of agree with that, actually. Should play Callahan. Shouldn't have gotten rid of Taysom Hill. Yeah, I'm sure they're kicking themselves for Taysom Hill. But, you know, let's temper the Taysom Hill would have come in and made a difference thing here. I mean, the guy made a bunch of plays primarily with his legs against third and fourth stringers. It's not like he was uh, putting up tons of numbers with his arm uh, against uh, first string defenses. Um, I, you know, don't th- doubt that he would be a nice developmental prospect, but um, you know, there's nothing to say that he would have come in and done any better than Hundley is. If things don't improve, you can double as Santa in December. Yeah, I, I said that. Uh, Said that to my girls um, just this morning, you know. I told you guys I wasn't going to shave until they win. Uh, you know, I could always double, uh, earn some extra money as a Santa on the side uh, in December if this continues. 
I can't believe it's week nine. We're talking about Joe Callahan. <laughs> well, you are, and we are. Uh, that's been the, about the gist of it when it comes to the quarterback play. I think those those kind of rumblings will only grow louder. Uh, the less, you know, the longer it goes on, the, the more kind of lack of kind of dynamic play we see at the quarterback spot. I think you, you're going to see that. Who fires capers? Mark, Ted, Mike? Uh, that would be Mike. That would be Mike's call. And he probably will, will do so if things continue down this path. Why does Trevor Davis, Trevor Davis continually bring out kicks? Well, I thought it was pretty clear this week they wanted to get things going. McCarthy had mentioned it earlier in the week that he wanted to get the return game going. I thought the Lions did a really good job of kicking it just outside the end zone, so he had to like field it at the 10, and then obviously he has to bring it up, and their coverage unit did a fantastic job. Packers will lose Sunday, says John Rayhor. Uh, any chance Callahan sees time versus the Bears? Um, only if Hunley is legitimately terrible in the first half, say like three or four turnovers, then maybe. Mike is responsible for coaches. Correct, Ray. Hundley is horrible. Well, Ryan has checked in. At this rate, you'll be able to double his Gandalf soon. <laughs> uh, there's more wrong here than Hundley. Neil, I couldn't agree more, and so does Mike McCarthy. Um, I think their biggest issues are on defense, but uh, you can't win games without scoring. And right now, they have shown no ability to score. Their only times that they have been able to move the football is at the end of halves when teams are basically playing off and allowing them to move the football, just keeping them in front of them at, you know, at all times. It's one thing. It's great that they went into this no huddle and you know found a rhythm and, and got down and scored a touchdown. But they did that after the Lions had built a significant lead and their defensive game plan completely changed. When it was still, when the, you know, when the game was still kind of in hand and uh, in the balance, they couldn't move the ball at all. We are ranked 27th, woohoo. I don't know, 27th in what? Ted McCarthy Capers and the training staff, bye bye, exposed. Uh, I wouldn't agree with that assessment there, Chris. Uh, I do think they're struggling uh, mightily to get a win here, but um, don't forget they struggled mightily to get a win with Aaron Rodgers last year uh, when they were 4 and 6. And it was a four game losing streak. So. It doesn't necessarily add up to your uh, assessment there. Uh, why was the press so soft on Mike? There was no criticism of defensive scheme or game plan. Man, I think you missed the press conference last night when Mike was n unhappy with both of my questions. What is the best college defensive player? I have no idea. We have to be the most injured team in the league, not even close. Capers has been completely exposed as incompetent without Aaron Rodgers and the offense on the field and the defense on the bench. I kind of agree with that. Uh, Capers on the hot seat? Yes, Justin. Have Mike call Bill Belichick? Not sure why you do that. Balaga has played his last game as a Packer. It's a possibility. Rodgers ran the table? Well, Rodgers led the charge. Um, he had some help. Young, agile, rushing QB in college. Maybe the O should use Hunley's strengths. A Kaepernick type of QB? Yeah, I agree with that in the sense that I think his legs are his best attribute. Uh, the problem is, is that's not their offense. I mean, they have some zone read stuff. They have some you know, stuff that they can use in that regard, but that's not how their offense is built. They're not about to completely change it just for Brett Hundley, um, just because that's not Mike McCarthy's system. So I do think they need to lean that way. The other problem is, is getting him out on the edge, use, having him use his legs and try, rolling out, you know, using uh, bootlegs and stuff like that. He hasn't shown to be particularly adept at completing and making plays outside the pocket. He gets outside the pocket a lot, and when he runs, he sometimes makes plays as far as as a runner. But as a passer, more often than not, I mean, I was, we're hovering around 90% here. When he gets outside and looks downfield, he can't make a play. Now, obviously, some of that is on the wide receivers, not breaking loose, but sometimes it's about fitting a ball into a tight window. Uh, and he has not shown any kind of, I guess, desire to do that. Now, maybe he's under orders. Don't try and throw it downfield. You did see him make a couple of really scary throws when he got outside and then threw back into the middle of the field. One was incomplete and one was complete. That is the cardinal sin of quarterbacking, but you know, that's at least showing, you know, a, a willingness to try and make a play. Beal didn't look all that fast to me just saying, Deborah, it's his first NFL action after missing months and months of time 
Uh, every other guy on that field has been through a training camp and through eight football games. Yeah, he's going to look lost. He's going to look slow. Um, you know, his head is probably swimming. Uh, right at this point, it's not about, uh, you know, what he looks like physically. It's about him just being in the right place at the right time. I mean, I, I don't think there's any doubt on the screenplay that busted big, which basically put the dagger in the heart of the Packers. Uh, it sure looks like that's his responsibility. And, you know, that's what's going to happen when you've got a guy out there who hasn't played at all, you know. So maybe he looks slow, but I have zero doubt a big part of that is that his head is swimming. Uh, he missed Jordy last night down the middle, wide open. Yes, Scott, he most certainly did. I saw him throw a football through the window of a moving car. Awesome. At least the defensive scheme is sound. Rolls eyes. Uh, yeah, John. Uh, the biggest problem with, I have with the scheme is it always looks so great on paper, but the, I think the Golden Tate play where Randall has him in the slot and they're playing zone and he has to pass Tate off on a crosser to uh, Martinez and I think Gruden even said something on the live broadcast where he said, how do you get Mar Tate, Golden Tate on Martinez? Well, it's this thing that Capers has where it all looks good on paper. Okay, he, if he comes across, you have to pass him off. Well, that's fine, but Martinez is already playing the tight end, and all of a sudden he has to switch gears and flip his hips and get, uh, you know, cross the field with a guy who's much quicker and much faster than he is, and, you know, that's a 15-yard automatic first down. And you see again and again and again in Capers' scheme where, you know, maybe – you know, 20 years ago when they had guys who played together forever, maybe that would work, and they stayed healthy. Uh, you know, maybe that that was a way you could go about it. But this day and age, especially with this defense, with guys in and out all the time, um, and they haven't played together a whole lot, it's just not – it doesn't hold up. Uh, is Capers problem adjusting to injuries? Somewhat, Dustin. I think you saw a lot of that last year uh, once uh, you saw the domino effect at corner. Um, I do think a lack of pass rush is really hurting them, obviously. Um, and he's having to compensate for that and calling big blitzes, and they're not getting home, and they're getting burned by it. Randall was the best player on that defense last night. Yeah, that's, uh, he's, in, he's in the conversation. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I asked Mike about that today. Uh, McCarthy, I said, you know, he's really bounced back since the benching against Chicago on the Thursday night, all those games ago. Uh, he's really kind of put his nose to the grindstone and really kind of improved. Uh, and I don't fans don't want to hear it, but he really the tape bears it out. Uh, he's given up some completions, but you know there, he's always right there. That could, for the most part, the coverage has been good. Um, he's in the right position. A uh, couple guys have made plays on him, but for the most part, he's really elevated his game. Thoughts on Colin Cowherd? I have none. Both of them are always hurt. Capers uh, is a terrible defense week after week. How much of an impact was the missed field goal? Not a, I wouldn't say it had a huge impact in the kind of outcome of the game. I think it did kind of suck the life out of the place. Um, and I do think it's kind of frustrating as an offense when you come out and you're moving the ball and you have a really nice drive and then all of a sudden you get behind the sticks and you can't make it up and then you, know, you do get the, the block field goal and you go, you know, you have that whole drive and it's all for naught basically. Um, and then, you know, Daniels turns around and has the boneheaded penalty on third down, which allows that drive to, to kind of continue. And then all of a sudden it's seven, nothing. And everybody in the place is probably thinking, here we go again. So maybe in that sense, you know, mentally, it maybe got into guys' heads a little bit, but you know, that if they had hit that field goal, would that have made the defense play better? And would the Lions have punted at some point last night? I doubt it. King playing well. I agree. Overall. Coward has it 100% 100 spot on. Uh, that Rodgers should uh, refuse to play for the Packers? That's adorable. Do they let Clay go after this year? Tyler, I think it's a possibility. So do you still think all on Rodgers thing is old, or have you realized? Have I realized what? That Aaron Rodgers is one of the best players in the game, and that this team is completely built around him, and when he is um, suddenly, unexpectedly taken off the squad... Uh, that they're struggling to adjust? Yes, I realize that. Uh, why not more short slants, bootleg screens? Uh, well, they tried a couple screens last night. One they hit on with Montgomery. Another one flew over Aaron Jones's hands. Um, the slants, maybe that's just what they've deemed to be, you know, 
maybe not a strength of Hunley's, although they did run it quite a little bit when they went to the no huddle stuff. They had Montgomery out there, they would split him out wide, and then they worked the middle of the field on a bunch of slant plays. But I know what you mean as far as incorporating it more into their base offense. Maybe we'll see more of it going forward, but I tend to think that'll be limited to those hurry-up situations that we saw last night. Uh, has anyone heard from Clinton Dix lately? He has been invisible this year. Yeah, Bill, his play has really regressed. There's no doubt about it. Do you think Rodgers will opt out because of the personal personnel they had around him? No, people, Aaron Rodgers isn't going anywhere. Aaron Rodgers already had all the leverage. All this idea, like, he should use his leverage. He has all the leverage. He's had all the leverage. And it's only going to get worse the closer he gets to the end of his deal. That's why they need to do a deal this summer even with two years left on his gig. Like, this idea that Aaron Rodgers is going to suddenly, like, quit or leave or should, you know, play hardball, give me a break. The guy already knows what he means to the team. He didn't need this injury and his absence to, to all of a sudden draw that into sharp relief for him in the front office. This is not a mystery. And the closer he gets to them being one year out and they're, you know, using having to use the franchise tag, the worse it gets for the Packers. So they are... They trust me, this summer they will get this deal done. And he will be the highest paid player in the NFL. There is zero doubt about that. They will not let him out the door. He's not going to refuse to sign. This whole thing is about Fox Sports needing clicks and Coward trying to stay relevant. Don't forget, a year or two ago, Coward was saying Rodgers was a total choke artist. I mean, come on. I mean, really? We're talking about Colin Freaking coward? Come on, people. Rogers is going to get so much money, there won't be anything left to sign Adams. Well, maybe. But, you know, don't forget, this is why they're rolling things over every year. I mean, Packer fans get all upset when other teams are spending all this money the first days of free agency. The Packers don't spend it. And they roll these things over, and people say, oh, they have all this cap space. Well, that's what. That's why. They've been rolling it over in anticipation of signing Aaron Rodgers. And along the way, they've left a little bit of room, wiggle room, to get guys like Corey Lindsley and Devontae Adams under contract. Now, you got to wonder if Adams is like hell-bent at this point at hitting the market. Uh, because the more he plays with Brett Hundley, the harder it's going to be for him to put up numbers. Now, maybe the Packers will sense something there and try and get him signed to a kind of hometown-friendly deal. Something like Cobb had where, hey, sign here for a couple more years, Work, you know, play with Aaron for a couple more years, and you'll have one more shot at a big contract down the road. Maybe he bites on that, but you know, they they have the maneuverability with their cap. Russ Ball does a great job in that regard. Uh, Jordy will restructure his deal to stay and keep Adams. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Is Mike McCarthy playing it safe or is Hundley tentative? Bit of both, Mark. Um, he's not asking him to do a whole lot. Uh, the few times uh, that he has kind of had opportunities to push the ball downfield, he's either been looking at the rush or has shown a res reticence to push it down the field. Um, do I think he'll let Hunley throw it more in the next couple weeks? He threw it a lot last night. They were just all three yards in front of the line of scrimmage or even behind the line of scrimmage. It's not a question of throwing it more. It's a question of well, what types of throws he's asking him to make. And right now, it's a lot of horizontal stuff, not a lot of vertical stuff. I uh, think Rodgers does a Packer-friendly deal. Eh, no. <laughs> I think he's going get, to gonna get his. Um, I do think he will be mindful of how big he, they allow his cap number to be. That was something they were really kind of... Uh, they both agreed on last time around where they made sure it never reached, where it was never kind of ballooning to take up a, a significant, like a more than, uh, you know, a certain number, a certain percentage of the ca of their salary cap. Uh, I do think they will try and be mindful of that so it evens out year after year where it never jumps and takes up a huge amount. <laughs> what booze would you recommend to get through the season? All of it. We need to pound the ball, no choice. I could not agree more. And the decision last night to go spread and use Ty Montgomery and even Jamal Williams at times and get away from Aaron Jones blew my mind. To me, that is the way to for this team can ever even possibly win 
is to you know shorten the game, run the ball, uh, keep the ball out of the other team's hands because the long, the more the defense is on the field, the worse it's going to be. I just yeah, I thought I thought this was obvious, but apparently Mike McCarthy disagrees. Thoughts on Brett Hundley's gum chewing? I asked Mike McCarthy about it today because I seriously cannot remember ever in the history of my watching the National Football League uh, a guy chewing gum during games. So I've seen guys chew on the sidelines. I've you know, obviously seen it in practice, but never during a game. I think maybe Cam Newton did it once early in his career, but I just Hundley does it all the time. Kind of blows my mind. Good luck in Chicago next week and safe travels. Thanks. Defense play calling getting stolen? Oh, I mean, do you mean like T.J. Lang tipping things off? Um, maybe that. I, I don't know if that's what you mean, but uh, I would doubt that had much to do with it. Um, d just go back and look at uh, what Jim Bob Cooter did to um, Dom Capers last year, and it's pretty similar. Do you think Capers is a good coach? Well, I think he's, you know, he knows more about football than you or I will ever, you know, no, he's forgotten more than we'll ever know. And I, I do think he was a great coach at one time. I do think the game uh, has, the offenses have kind of adjusted to his style of defense, and he's had a hard time adjusting back. Why is Mike McCarthy playing Hundley so conservatively? Give him to the keys to the Porsche, not the minivan. Mike, I think, uh, you know, the fact that he is, especially two weeks in a row, tells you all you need to know. Um, especially plays like the one where Jordy Nelson is screaming down the middle of the field and all he has to do is pull the trigger for a touchdown and he looks at the rush and it results in a sack. You know, it's, I get that people want to, want him to loosen it up, etc. but I'm telling you, if and when that happens, it's going to be a turnover fest. They're not going to win a ball game that way. Oh, thanks, Adam. Very nice of you to say. We should get rid of Bulaga always getting... Hurt, I think you mean hurt. Um, he is always getting hurt, um, but he plays well when he's in there. Looked the same as we did versus the Saints. Yeah, Luke, it wasn't very different. Uh, maybe some of the window dressing was a little uh, different, but uh, man, it was very similar. At least we will have an easier schedule next year. But there's the bright side. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, turn Rogers into metal like Wolverine. Yes, get, infuse his bones. Um, who are they going to replace Bulaga's spot? Uh, sounds like Justin McCray will get first crack at it. Um, he did suffer that ankle injury right at the end of the game, but it sounds like he should be okay to go. Won't really know until tomorrow when we get our first injury report. If we lose this week, time to look toward the future. It's never too early. Can Aaron Rodgers win MVP while on IR? They, we have this conversation seemingly every year when big guys go out and their teams struggle without them. Um, remember the year Peyton Manning... Uh, was lost, and there was a discussion. He should be the MVP because it was clear how much uh, he meant to that team. Um, but, you know, it, that's not going to happen. What do we need to do to make the playoffs? Win a game. Playoffs? But playoffs? I just want us to win a game. B.J. Raji at tackle. There you go. There's the B.J. Raji question that I needed. All right, thanks, everyone. Um, sorry if I didn't get to your question. I will be back on tomorrow and throughout the week. So be sure to stop back in. In the meantime, make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. Uh, we'll have everything from the game, from Mike's availability. Uh, tomorrow there'll be practice, there'll be um, locker room, etc. So keep it here, keep it at PackersNews.com, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks a lot, guys.